Thank you, Margoli, and thank you, Agatha, for inviting me uh, in this session. A fundamental stage in the production of woven fabrics is the spinning of yarn, the structural elements of textiles. The technique for making thread is based on the principle of twisting fibers together to long continuous strands. Spinning can be done with bare hands, but the implementation of a spindle equipped with a spindle board ensures the production of a high quality homogeneous thread. On the basis of this principle, slightly differentiated techniques and tools have been developed. For example, in prehistory, low, middle, and high war spindles have been used in different cultures. These tools can also be used for the manufacture of spin and rope, which are coarser qualities of fiber products with a wide range of usage in everyday life. In this paper, we discuss the use of twisted fibers beyond textile production. Our aim is twofold. Firstly, to present examples of alternative employment of fiber craft products. Secondly, to explore the research potential of a specific category of archaeological evidence of prehistoric fiber crafts, namely string imprints from the Aegean region in the Eastern Mediterranean. Whereas actual prehistoric threads, strings, ropes, and textiles are rare archaeological finds in general, imprints comprise a relatively large body of evidence which may prove very informative, despite being dependent on the imprint preservation stages. Our study focuses on the Bronze Age, and in particular, the first half of the second millennium BC, as we examine material found in the late Cycladic town of Akrotiri on the island of Thila. Fiber crafts at Akrotiri have been studied so far in relation to textile production. The main category of evidence for the assessment of such production are loop weights of discoid shape and cretan type that were retrieved by the hundreds from some of the settlement buildings testifying to the operation of textile manufacture workshops. In earlier studies, it was pointed out that evidence for on-site yarn production was weak due to the scarcity of screening tools such as spring wars. From a technological aspect, this kind of observation was bringing the Acrotelian yarn production in correspondence with neo-palatial Crete, where a scarcity of spinning wars is also remarked. The cultural relations between Crete and Thera in this period are a wider research topic, with textile and fiber crafts taking up a prominent place in the discussion. The main issue in question is when, and to what degree, local fear and technological te textile traditions were replaced by Cretan ones. Evidence regarding the technological tradition of the spindle at Akrotiri was collected during the most recent archaeological investigations at the site, which for the first time revealed extensive parts of the middle Cycladic horizon, the one which immediately precedes the period under discussion here. The middle Cycladic period at Akrotiri corresponds to the beginning of the Minoan cultural expansion in the Aegean. New evidence showed that although the residential units of the late Cycladic town do not contain large quantities of spinning tools, nonetheless spinning walls can, uh, were constantly recovered from secondary deposits of both the late and the middle Cycladic periods. Thus, fiber crafts were practiced at Akrotiri by use of the spindle technology at least since the Middle Cycladic period. These tool assemblages included spin cores suitable for, for the production of numerous distinct qualities of fiber products, from the finest thread achievable with miniature tools and extremely fine fibers, to strings and coarser qualities produced with large and heavy spin cores. Complementary evidence for fiber crafts can be sought in the form of string imprints preserved in the archaeological record of Akrotiri. We chose to focus on two main categories of archaeological finds from the late Cycladic town, revealing two distinct uses of string and originating from different localities. The first category includes a Thiran cultural product, the wall paintings, where string has been used as a drafting device. The second category includes the ceilings of unfired clay for which string had been used as a binding medium. These ceilings originate from Crete and were imported to Thera. 
Therefore, the comparison of the fiber products in the form of their imprints is meaningful in view of the question of the technological traditions of the two islands and the cultural relations between them. Our paper does not intend to offer an exhaustive presentation of all the imprints available. Rather, it comprises a pilot study offering some examples for the potential, but also the challenges emerging from this kind of approach. In all instances, the imprints were observed macroscopically. Our observations in the case of wall paintings were directly on the archaeological material, but the extremely fragile nature of the ceilings does not support their repeated direct manipulation. We therefore opted for high-resolution photographs of the imprints and their casts. With regard to the reconstruction of the technical properties of the impressed screen, we adapted our technical description from the methodology for yarn description developed by the Center for Textile Research of the University of Copenhagen. Our aims were A, to measure the width of the string imprint, which is suggestive of the original string thickness, B, to distinguish the structure of the string, C, to define the direction of spin as preserved on the imprint, and D, to measure the number of twists per centimeter. And we now turn to our first category. String was commonly used in theory wall paintings for the preparation of the wall surface by the craftsman in order to create a tripartite division of the drawing surface. The upper part was dedicated to floral or banded decoration. The central part was dedicated to the main theme, while the lower part represented the solid basement of the representation. The separation was executed by use of a string stretched horizontally along the surface and between the two vertical edges of the wall thing. The string was pressed on the moist surface of the plaster with the purpose exactly of creating an imprint. Here we examine examples from building Beta, which is known for the wall paintings of the Boxing Boys, the Antelopes, and the Blue Monkeys. In this building, we observe that there is an extensive use of string imprints, especially on the frescoes from room one. The compositions of the Antelopes and the Boxing Boys have a continuous tripartite division of their surface with a common running motif in the upper and lower parts, but different themes in the central part. The string imprints in this case must have been instrumental to ensuring the homogeneity of the two different scenes. To evaluate the technical properties of the strings used in the creation of these frescoes, we focused on selected areas where the imprints are well preserved. In the composition of the box and boys, we measured the imprints on three points in the upper part of the composition. Point one is on the upper limit of the dark thin band. Point two on the lower limit of the red band, and point three just below the blue band. You know, in points one and three, the width of the imprint was 1.5 millimeters, but on point two it was double, three millimeters. In all three cases, the negative of the string has a z direction of spin. However, it was not possible to discern macroscopically if this is the primary spin or applied string. Yet, number of twists appear homogeneous and rather consistent in all three points as we measured 6 to 5 twists per centimeter. In the composition of the antelopes, we observed and measured three points in the upper part as well. They also belong to horizontal string imprints, defining the drawing of thin color bands. Point one is from the lower limit of the upper red band. Point two is below the lower red band. Point three is a little to the right of point two. On point one, the width of the imprint was measured 2 mm. On points 2 and 3, we measured 1.5 mm. In all three cases, the negative of the string has a Z spin direction. Again, it was not possible to conclude if this is the primary spin or if this was applied string. In this composition as well, the string used had 6 to 7 twists per centimeter. As a general conclusion, we can observe that the strings used by the artists were meticulously manufactured thin products. The homogeneity of the number of twist density suggests that their manufacture was mechanized, that is, they were spun with the implementation of a spindle equipped with a worm. The thickness of the original products must not have exceeded 2 mm in most cases. Two basic questions were not possible to answer through macroscopic observation. First, whether the Z direction corresponds to primary spinning or not, and second, the origin of the fibers used. We now turn to our second category of imprints. The testimony in question survives on the back of small-sized clay ceilings recovered at the site of Akrotiri. 
These particular ceilings belong to a type known as flat base because the side usually referred to as the back is relatively flat since it was pressed against a flat object when the clay was moist. On the basis of the characteristic imprint, the object they were pressed against was made of leather. The surviving imprints show that the leather was folded many times in order to diminish its own size. These small folded pieces of leather are assumed to have functioned as parchment serving some sort of administrative correspondence purposes. It also seems that the screen was wrapped around the parchment several times. The last stage of the procedure was to stamp the clay with one, two, or even three different seals. It is believed that the stamped clay with the folded parchment underneath were dispatched to localities outside their actual place of manufacture. What remains today after the parchment was obviously removed from the clay ceiling or had decomposed is a small lump of dry and fired clay bearing the imprint of the leather parchment and the string on one side and the imprints of one or more administrative seals on the other. This sort of ceiling is found in a number of archaeological sites on the island of Crete in deposits that date to the Minoan neopalatial period. As mentioned previously, this particular evidence from Aplodiri does not represent local technology in the strict sense of the word, since the clay ceilings were imported to Thera ready-made. So the string evidence, which is preserved on account of its imprints on the ceiling clay, was in fact string that originated in Crete. For this study, we examined the string imprints on high-resolution photographs of four ceilings and of casts made from them. In general, observation of the details was very challenging. It was easier to observe the direction of spin or to measure the width of the imprint than to define the number of twists per centimeter. The cases discussed here represent a very small percentage of the total screen imprints from the Aplodiri ceilings. The casts of the two ceilings depicted here have imprints which are 0.4 to 0.5 mm and 0.06 mm wide respectively. Extremely low relief S-direction slants are observed, which suggest that these strings were S-span. It was not possible to observe on the cast if this was a primary or secondary spin. The cast of another ceiling shows very well the contour of the, par uh, the, uh, the, contour of the parchment, which is 3 cm long, the one on the upper part of the slide. A very thin string was wrapped tightly around it. The width of the string imprint is 0.3 mm. We also observed a very low relief S sloping configuration suggesting an S direction of spin. Lastly, the lower ceiling bears one of the best preserved and widest string imprints. It is 1 mm wide and it is spun on the S direction and has 5 twists per centimeter. Given the examples just presented, it can be suggested that in the Cretan administrative practices, very fine string, best classified as thread, was used in order to wrap the silk parchment tightly. Although we cannot confirm whether these S-spun threads are single or ply, in any case their manufacture would have demanded skill and care and tools with rather small and light spindle works, at least for the finest products. As in the case of the frescoes, it was not possible to detect evidence leading to the identification of the fibers used. However, the collection of meteorological and technical data deriving from imprints can be useful for a circle of experimental tests to correlate tools and products on the basis of methodologies developed by the Center for Textile Research of the University of Copenhagen. The study of imprints of fiber products provides the potential to discuss aspects of prehistoric fiber crafts which are otherwise either archaeologically invisible or extremely rare and thus hardly re representative of general patterns. In the examples of imprints that we presented, we can see how this particular field of inquiry allows us to test previous experimental work to gain a clearer picture of the technology applied and to express new hypotheses. Our observations allow for a first level of comparison between what, what was in all probability local theorem fiber products on one hand and Cretan threads on the other. We reached the precursor conclusion that the spinning technology was applied in both localities for the production of high quality fiber products to be used, to be used beyond textile production. So the imprints confirm the use of the spindle and the sharing of a common basic technological tradition in the two neighboring islands during the neo period, at least in light of the sample presented. 
Not all aspects of this technology are discernible by use of this method, at least not during this preliminary stage. To address crucial questions such as twist direction, angle of twist, and perhaps even fiber origin, microscopical analytical methods and a larger imprint sample are necessary. We hope that in the near future we will have the opportunity to continue our study of imprints of organic materials since we believe that this is a promising field in the research of prehistoric textile and fiber crafts. Thank you for your attention.